So it might just be that I'm getting older, or it might be that my fluorescent lights in my shop are from the Smithsonian era. But in my basement shop, there's some areas that are poorly lit. And whenever I'm working in those areas, I'm always either having to either relocate or jury rig up some kind of light source so that I can see what I'm doing. Well, enough is enough. I need something that'll let me have all the light that I need regardless of where I am in my shop. So here's what I came up with. I thought that if I built some kind of gantry across the ceiling of my shop that I could build a trolley that could glide along it. The trolley would roll and be held centered on the rail by using a series of non-swiveling casters. Then from a small Lazy Susan on the bottom, I can suspend a piece that would be able to turn in any direction. An articulating arm would tighten into various positions, and then at the bottom of that, I'll have a place to mount a light. Well, at least that's the idea. Let's see how it comes together. The first thing I needed to do was to counterbore a bunch of holes along the 12-foot 2x4 in all the locations that it would cross one of the joists that are in the ceiling. Since my neighbor was out shopping for a new coffee table, I had to figure out how to hold these boards up against the ceiling so that I could fasten them into place all by myself. I ended up just using some clamps to hold them in the general area and then I fastened it in tight with a screw into each joist. For the bottom of the gantry, I used a 12-foot decking board. I clamped it into place, made sure it was centered, and then screwed it in tight. Then to make sure everything was secure, I gave it the old 200-pound bucket of lard test. Next was making the trolley. I cut up some old pieces of scrap plywood and then gave them a good sanding. Then I measured out where the casters needed to be, marked the locations, and screwed them into place. Once I finished the pieces for one side, I could glue and fasten them together before repeating the exact same thing for the other side. Now the bottom piece needs to have a hole cut into it that the swiveling arm can pass through. So I find the center, and then I cut it out with a hole saw in the drill press. Then I need to cut a small 4-inch square that'll fit right on the top of the Lazy Susan that the swivel arm can connect to. Fastening that into place, And now I can fasten a Lazy Susan to the inside of the trolley. Okay, so with both sides and the bottom done, I can glue and screw it all together. Since there will be some weight hanging from this trolley, I wanted to beef up the structural integrity. The last thing I need is having to explain to the ER doctor that I got my head wound because some idiot didn't reinforce his trolley. At the bandsaw, I could cut it out, and then I could fasten one onto the front and the back of the trolley. Next up was making the swivel arm. I started out with a block of hardwood. In this case, I'm using a chunk of cherry that used to be the leg from my neighbor's coffee table. I start by drilling out the hole where the arm pieces will attach to, and then trimming it to width over at the bandsaw. I put a 3 8 inch round over on the edges, and then I took the corners off the end at the disc sander. Now I can drop it into place, mark its location, drill, glue, and screw it into place. As that was drying, I could get started making the pieces for the articulating arm. I began by ripping down some plywood into two and a half inch strips and then cutting them to length over at the miter saw. 
I marked the locations where I needed to drill their mounting holes and took the corners off at the disc sander and then gave each piece a round over to hopefully minimize the damage to my face when I inevitably walk into it later. Now it's time for assembly. I started by bolting the long arm pieces onto the swivel arm in a way where they could still swing freely. Then I could climb up on the ladder and slide the trolley onto the gantry. So I'm using Johnny bolts to fasten the arm pieces together and they really work well for this because their heads are oblong. This means that I can make a small plug, trace the head of the bolt onto it and chisel out a recess that matches the shape. Now when I glue this into place it keeps the bolt from turning so that when I go to tighten down that section of the arm I don't have to be fiddling with wrenches. Now for the other end, I need to make a knob. And of course I'm going to use walnut for this, because it's totally unnecessary. I start by drawing my circle, and then having a 5th grade geometry class flashback while I mark 6 points around the circumference. Then using a Forstner bit, I drill out each one of those locations. Next step is to cut it out over at the bandsaw and then soften each of the edges at the sander. And to make it more comfortable for my little princess hands to turn, I chose to add a small round over to it at the router table. Then I drilled out the center and chiseled out a recess for a nut. And to glue it into place, I just chose to use CA glue because it's quick and easy and I didn't have to wait for an epoxy to cure before moving on. Next order of business was to thread it on and give it a test. The final part of the arm was to make the little platform at the bottom. This is where the light will get mounted. I drilled a hole for the bolt and then made a small knob and glued it on the end. Then I trimmed it to size and put a plastic washer on it to hold it into place. I added some glue and then clamped it on to dry. And once it had cured, I put in some reinforcement screws to give it a bit more strength. And now I can see what it looks like with the light mounted on it. And this thing is awesome. It sure lights up the shop, and the range of motion? It's fantastic. Just what I was hoping for. Now to keep the trolley from sliding off the edge, I figured I had better add some little bumpers. I pounded in some little rubber feet into some scraps and then screwed them on to either end of the gantry. So, some of you are probably thinking, that thing would be super annoying to have in your way when you don't need it around. And, no, well, that's the same thing my wife says about me being in the kitchen. Also, this is why I left the top bolt free swinging. This way, I can use some pulleys and a cleat on the wall to actually lift it up and out of the way when it's not in use. So, after I'm done using it, I can close up the light, fold up the arms and lock them into position, Lower down the weighted latch and then hook it on. And hoist it up and out of the way. And now it's out of my way and I won't be running into it. Yeah, but don't worry. Every now and then it lets itself down and does a few laps around the shop on its own.
this thing has really turned out to be super handy. It swivels around so smoothly, and whether I'm digging through my cabinets looking for the tool I was just holding a minute ago, or working on my benches, the different arm positions allows me to get all the light that I need. Additionally, I found it helpful to hold my cameras. Whether I'm filming short videos for Instagram or need to get a particular camera angle for my videos on YouTube, this arm system has let me get the camera into lots of positions that my ordinary tripod just can't do. In short, it's been a great little upgrade to my shop. Now, if you'd like to make this for your shop, then I encourage you to check out the step-by-step -step plans. They're available on my website over at fishershoponline.com. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you feel I've earned it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. slip off of there. Oh, did I not have it clipped on? Oops. There we go. Bigger. Almost. Oh, come on. I'm gonna murder somebody. Too big. Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, stupid.